more security junk. So we've got a Demco 5852, which is a glass brick detector, and it's a transmitter, of course, since it's entirely wireless here. Um, nine volt lithium battery only. So what I know about this so far is that we can open this door upside down. We can open this door or not. What I know about this so far is we can open this door to get to the battery. There's alarm and event lights. We've got some sort of selectory switch. Yeah, there's, sorry, this fell apart. There we go. You can change the two switches down there and what does that do okay how is it so you can i don't know whatever that's for we'll see how that's coupling inside the case and a nine volt alkaline battery Use of another battery, let's see. Nine volt lithium battery only. Alkaline battery. Someone can follow directions. All right, so we'll do the, pop the hood off and oh look, I didn't even realize there's directions on here. Yep, yep, don't use uh, alkaline or anything else weird. And these are just sensitivity switches, okay. So you're just doing binary for the sensitivity. So it has four lovely selections, okay. Battery out. Do the good old, how long has this been in here? Test and see what it marks as. I don't care about polarity. Is that 0.87? Did that drain that to nothing? That is dead. And it could drain nine volts that low. So this thing will suck the life out of batteries. Well, as opposed to the infrared sensor, this appears pretty simple on this side. You can pop these boards out. All right, now I have a pair of pliers. Should be able to bend these little, there we go. Okay. And then this last board is held in by pure magic. I'm under the distinct impression that, oh, maybe not. Yeah, I'm under the distinct impression that there is a screw in the battery compartment here. Oops, don't go back on your spikes. And that is how you do it. Okay. Oh, okay. So, we've got this overbuilt looking nine volt holder, our intrusion detector for if you take this cover off, another intrusion detector. This is a bit, oh, I like it. Really floppy, but I like it. Um, you got two out of the three LEDs populated, so this one's not the top of the range model. Looks like they had it on lowest setting possible. And so, if I understand correctly, this is what detects the glass break. Uh, I'll have to look up how glass break detectors normally work, but this is the detector. And here's where we get complicated. This is the surface mount side, so we've got our main chip we'll try to look at. Is that a Honeywell marker on it? Yep, Honeywell make um, probably some sort of wireless mm, something, or it's just the shield. I don't know if I'll be able to take that can off. It's not like it's that important. And so I figured this was just the wireless module. Not completely populated. And there's our pit wave friend again. Using probably the same oscillator. This might be the antenna here then. And this lovely chip. So I wonder. This must be a test button. Takes a lot of force to press it. Yeah, it takes an awful lot of force to press it. So it's probably designed for a tool. That's much harder with a tool, never mind. Uh, here we go. Yeah, so it must be power on some of these pins and the signal on others. Let's see. A 3.6 volt and a tamper detector. Not connected. 
So what, this is an interlock then, I guess, for tamper. The knot connector is wired directly into, wired directly into something. So that might be the actual signal here. So this is the knot connected pin. If we notice, it goes to an unpopulated section, so that's not included, but this is our third pin that goes immediately through all kinds of filtering. So I still think this is the wireless module, mostly because I don't think this one has anything. MK1, so I thought this was a speaker, but I guess that would be what, microphone? Ooh, we don't get our test option. You have to manually short it if you want to test things. Whatever you would test with it. So let's take a quick look at how glass break detectors work. So glass break sensors can detect up to around 20 feet is the typical, and they can either tell by uh, basically just acoustically like a loud sound or by um, uh, vibrations from doing so. So I think this, probably if you have a giant shock of like smashing a window, it would cause this to, so if you had a gl glass break and you had a huge shock, it would uh, cause this to vibrate and hit the sensor. And this is just a microphone that would uh, pick up and uh, if it heard a loud sound. So I wonder if you can trip these by uh, clapping your hands or if they have to have loud sound and a shock at the same time. So maybe these don't activate from earthquakes or something. I don't know. Let's look up this model and see what it uh, claims to sell me on. All right. So they're selling this one on the fact that it has this ASIC in here that uh, basically is designed exactly for this purpose of analyzing the sound that it picks up and any frequencies and so on uh, to figure out and make sure that it exactly matches a glass breaking pattern and not just some sort of false alarm. And uh, this one can reach up to 25 feet with the uh, selectors on it. Um, so that's about all the marking material on it. But again, just a complicated mess of blah to make it work. Really dirty one from there. Soldering job as well. Flux everywhere. Just for reference, this goes into the case. Key up. And so we've got that little thing pressed against this, so... Somehow the glass breaking will cause that to actuate in some way. Might have something to do with pressure against the wall. I'm only guessing here. I don't really have a lot of information on these. So assume we have this against the wall. There's probably a pocket of air. And if there's a large change in pressure, it actually cause that beam to bounce back since this would almost be sealed. But since there's no paint on here, it's not like this is attached to any of the walls in this house. Oh, well. Oh, some paint, but yeah, it's not like this is attached as flush to the wall as some of the other things that I've pulled. So, fairly older unit here. If we notice, the original copyright is 96 on this. I don't think we have a year on the chip though. Not one that makes sense. Fairly old little sensor then. Does this have a year on it? Well, it doesn't have an obvious year. But yeah, so. Fairly old design there. That would explain why it's such a mishmash. Again, probably nowadays you'd have one single chip on it, very tiny amount of support, and it would just kind of work.